any of the full do you drink per day, that full Stanley cup? It's 40 ounces. I would say probably minimum of six. Six? Six times 40. What's that? Let me try it. What's that? It's heavy. See, it's heavy. Oh my God, you just got all over your white shirt. Shit. Oh. 200 ounces of that per day? Probably. I just couldn't bear to put my mouth on that. No, I, I, I thought it was a good look for you. I mean, we've shared multiple germs, but that lipstick contaminated straw pumps. Jennifer, what have you had it with this week? I've had it with gated communities. That is a fucking great. It's one. Unbelievable I how stupid it is. I can't believe that we have not discussed this. It's horrible. In Twenty years of friendship. Gated communities are the absolute worst. The worst. Because what it, here's my deal. Every time I'm going into my neighborhood waiting for the gate to open, I think, why are we doing this? We're paying for our own roads through our homeowner's dues. And anybody that's going to rob you is just going to wait till the person in front of you goes. I mean, it's not like a Cracker Jack fail safe system. Right. All you have to do is go in after somebody. If, if there was a committee meeting and you could vote to do away with the gate, you would assume I would go to the homeowners association, <laughs> which would never no, happen. Could you imagine ever. anything worse? Something would be wrong with me. Like take me to the emergency room if you, you walk in and I'm going to a homeowners association meeting. So I, for my job, I have to go to a lot of gated communities where I'm designing a home. Right. Most of the time, these security guards want to play hero. Well, first of all, there are 150. My th whole thing would be it's a power trip for the security guard. 100%. It's the mall cop syndrome. Right. Right. So let me tell you what I've had it with. Okay. What have you had it with? So you're on a website and you're getting close to like making a purchase and they're like, prove to us that you're not a robot. Hate. Identify. The images that have a street sign in it. I flunk those tests. I flunk them all the time. Nonstop. Identify the crosswalks. Right. Identify a picture with lights in it. Yes. Traffic the, lights. Traffic lights. And so then you're like, is the pole a part of the traffic light? Right. We've got to figure out who invented that thing. And I want that motherfucker on I've Had It podcast. We need to know who invented that. And who are they trying to keep out? Like robots? Like if a robot has a credit card that works, why do they give a shit? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, who are they protecting themselves from? It's unbelievable. I don't understand. And it's like this, this like crazy layer of security. Everybody flunks the test. Do you guys flunk the test, Jenna Neely? I don't know if I've ever flunked the test. I've I flunked it. I, my my biggest I've thing is with you it. is the pole. Is the pole part, part of, of the right? Light? I don't know. The traffic light. Like, yeah. if you can see the back of the stop sign, does that count? Yeah. Right. Right. If there's just there's no oversight. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I just think. Who, what are they saving us from? Same with the gated community. Like, what are you protecting me from in my gated community? Fucking nothing. Right. What are you protecting me from on a website? Nothing. <laughs> robots. Robots. Killer robots. Killer robots, which if they have money, they can buy whatever they want. <laughs> if you're a robot and you have an unlimited credit card, I've had it podcast merch, take it all. <laughs> you can have all of it. No robot questions. Nothing. <laughs> Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. I'm Jennifer. Hi, I'm Angie. We call her Pumps. Jen and Neely are here. Richard's here. I'm so excited about this episode. I have a feeling you're going to be mad at me after the episode. Probably. Okay. And it doesn't take much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am so excited because we are going to discuss pickleball. Mm-hmm. I personally have not had it with pickleball. You're obsessed. We have some guests that are coming on later that have had it with pickleball. They've written a manifesto. But before we bring them on, I want to tell you and the audience. So last year, I started playing tennis. I've never played racket sports, had zero hand-eye coordination. Played tennis, took lessons religiously, and then... Some friends and I started playing pickleball. I was like, well, this is even easier. More people can play it. So I play both tennis and pickleball. Pickleball, I play every single day, sometimes twice a day. I mean, we're serious about it. Oh, I know. I'm I, aware I, of your seriousness I mean, I with pickleball. I take lessons. I have a coach. Much to my surprise, 
all these articles in the news start popping up, pickleball is taking over America, it's a sensation, blah, blah, blah. Well, then I see this rather alarming story in the New York <laughs> Post. The New York Post covers the story that there's this playground in the West Village, which is a neighborhood in Manhattan, and the kids would play on this playground. Well, apparently, the pickleballers have come and they're taping off the lines and putting up nets on the playground. And I can't get behind that. These kids are all playing in the playground in West Village. This is what the article says. The sun was shining. Kids were laughing, riding scooters and kicking soccer balls about. (laughs) Pickleball players lined up beside two designated courts on the concrete area of the popular park. Then suddenly a commotion interrupted the picture-perfect early autumn. The father of one of the children playing started screaming at the pickleball players and threatening to call the police. Leave, he yelled repeatedly. (laughs) So these parents are furious that these pickleball players are out there on the playground, taking over some of the playground. The kids are kind of huddled over uh, on part of the playground because, you know, space is not a big thing in Manhattan, obviously. Right. Right. So then apparently the parents are encouraging the kids, just go ahead and kick your soccer ball. So the kids are kicking their soccer balls right through the pickleball court. So it's just pandemonium. It's chaos in the West Village at the pickleball courts. And so I personally... And I'm for the pickleball players. See, I'm not. Let me tell you why. What have those kids ever done with their lives? They're kids. Exactly. Kids are playground people. That's who they build playgrounds for. Adults can rent space. They can, uh, that, no, I'm, the kids I'm, win on that every time. No, I'm for the pickleball no, okay, players. Okay, okay, okay. I'm Let pro me, the pickleball players. These let's kids, say you and I were taking our rugrats to play outside. And we knew that that two hours of playing outside was going to be the difference in an early bedtime, no tears at bath time, all those things. Like run, get the energy out of them. And we march up there and there's adults playing on the playground, even though it's pickleball and you love it, you'd be furious. I'll tell you exactly what I'd do. Okay. I'd call a babysitter and say, come get my kids. I'm at this park, bring me my pickleball bag, <laughs> and I would send the kids to Chuck E. Cheese like a fucking normal person. No, you're wrong. And I would you're hop wrong. on the pickleball court. That makes no sense. I think that the, the, there's, there's some pavement there. Here's my point. What you think is because you're in a cult. You're in a pickleball cult. That's probably cult. true. If you lay it out, there is no story that ends with adults playing on a playground and kids playing on a playground that the adults should win. There, It's just, it can't happen. It's a playground. I think we're empowering kids too much. To play on a playground? Yeah. You've you've crossed over to the cult dark side. <laughs> I mean, you're on the dark side of this pickleball. I, I'm just saying. I mean, it's changed your personality kids are fine. a little you bit. You can send them over there. So the, uh, the, all the parks in Manhattan are all for kids. First and foremost, yes. When did this happen? That the kids get the parks? They have not done anything with their lives. These people do They're this. kids. Why? They, how could they do anything they, with their ex- lives? That's my they point. were just born. They've done the bare minimum. Adults are out working, paying for all this shit for the kids. The kids need to share these open spaces. In New York City, those basketball courts, especially in West Village, they're adults. There are no kids there. It's also like not a great playground. Jenna and I were talking about that. But in a situation where kids are trying to play soccer... And adults are trying to play pickleball, which is what this article is. Yeah. There is no scenario in which the kids should have to stand down for the adults. I got to say I'm with you on this one, Pumps, because New York City, these kids are so confined. They don't even have playgrounds at schools. They have, like, parking lots to play in with, like, some jungle gyms over there. Right. Adults could do lots of things. They could go to the movies. They could go to the bars. They could go run on... West the Side path. Highway on the mm-hmm. path. Mm-hmm. So I got to say, I think it belongs to the kids. Right. I just think your perspective is from the pickleball, like you're a pickleball purist cultist. Like it's the best thing in the world. It's the best thing in the world for me. That's right. Right. For you. What I say to the kids is when you get big enough, <laughs> then you can have your own. And you pay bills and you pay for your kids' stuff, then you can have your own place too. Now, we don't have these problems in Oklahoma City because we don't have a space Right, we have issue. tons of space. So there's not, there's not cross-contamination. Right. Pickleball courts are not contaminated with children. 
<laughs> right. Wait, children can't play pickleball? I'll tell you, some do. And sometimes when I'm at the place where I play pickleball, some kids will be in the court next to me. And they hit balls into our court nonstop. And the rule is when a ball goes in your court, you immediately stop play and you have to say ball because somebody could step on it and roll an ankle, right? right? And so, and also these kids like to do a lot of tomfoolery. We're in the middle of a grudge match championship, right? Right? I it's mean, a, it's, it's a every, big deal. It's, it's a big it's deal. A, it's a big deal. <laughs> every day, Jennifer plays in the championship of pickleball. <laughs> every multiple, day. Multiple <laughs> championships. Every day. Multiple. I won two championships <laughs> today before, before 9.30 a.m. Oh, my gosh. Two. We, we are in the presence of greatness right now. <laughs> They're obnoxious. They're loud. There's a lot of tomfoolery, and it just happens over. No, I'm a hundred percent on Team Jennifer for that. Okay, if thank you're you. next to a pickleball person and you're dicking off and yep. you put their ball, yep. then you should be expelled. And Agreed. if you're young, you're just stupid. Agreed. Go somewhere else. Agreed. It's, however, in a place where there's one opportunity to play, I think the kids have to win. I know that doesn't make you. I didn't happy. realize you were so pro kids. I feel I'm not. I don't even like kids, but I'm just <laughs> saying, it. You just can't convince me ever that an adult should have priority in a play area. <laughs> a dad who was also in the park on Friday put it more bluntly, meaning the pickleball players. They're the lantern flies of the sports world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. So then, I guess the parents called the police or the parks department and so they come and they tell the pickleball players get your shit and head out get your net and get out and they're, like, <laughs> they're like they're like no we're not gonna go we're not going oh no we won't go and so she's like look if you don't leave i'm gonna send somebody back here and they're gonna cuff cuff you so it's gotten really bad pickleball players so they've taken over playgrounds right okay which I support. <laughs> <laughs> which, for the record, I'm against. I support. But here's where I disagree with the pickleball players. They're taking over tennis courts. And this I oppose. The kids, fuck the kids. <laughs> no. Taking over the tennis courts, I oppose this. Our guests that are coming on, are mad, they're in New York, and they're madder than a hornet about the pickleballers taking over the tennis courts. I mean, they are mad. They've written a manifesto. I love it. They have a club. <laughs> they think that pickleball is like the demise of society. A hundred percent. It's predicting the failure of I the think world. They have had, had it. it with pickleball. I mean, had it on the same level of the same shit that we rail about times a billion. Right. That's how mad these guys are. We even we haven't written a manifesto about anything. No, but we're not <laughs> above it. Oh, heavens no, we're not above it. But no, we just don't have the discipline. Right. No. And I read their manifesto. It's excellent. Lots of big words. They're real they're as sharp as a tack. Sharp as tax. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They seem very, very, very smart. I don't know that we could write a manifesto. I love it so much when somebody's so fucking mad about something and they've just got to be in their bonnet and they're madder than hornets. I mean, fucking scorch the earth about pickleball, yes. even though I am a lover of pickleball. Right. Cult member. You're pickleball over children. Chief Kool-Aid maker. <laughs> Fuck the kids. Bring the pickleballers. Right. I'm, I'm there. When Jen and Neely secured these guests. Oh, you are so excited. I mean, I'm. You could get an A-list celebrity in here, and right. I wouldn't be as excited as to interviewing these people. This is Mike and Charlie from Brooklyn, New York, and their organization is called Club Leftist Tennis. I love it. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Great. Good. How, How are, are you? you guys? Nice to meet you. I have to tell you guys. When you committed to be our guest, I am like, inject this yes. anger you she have. She was so yeah. excited. Inject that <laughs> shit into my veins. The manifesto is fantastic. I love the manifesto. It is <laughs> Thank great. You. But I want, okay, I want our audience to know, tell us what a leftist tennis player is. We're both tennis players, lifelong tennis players. Uh, we are both on the left politically. And we figured that, you know, it's been... Uh, too long of a time that tennis has been slandered as, you know, a country club sport and we're reclaiming it as a, as the people's sport. <laughs> okay. I, I love so, it. So, so I have to let you know, I am a huge tennis fan, wow. but I also 
play pickleball. She's in a pickleball cult. Mm. I'm a part of the problem. Yeah. She's a cult. <laughs> I am playing a, both sides. I am a part of the problem. And so, and 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 I will admit it. But I I want to know first of all, what is your tennis ranking? Oh, not 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 too high, but our leftist ranking is way up. <laughs> You no, know, we're egalitarian, so we don't actually believe in tennis rankings. I love that. <laughs> Who's your favorite tennis player? My favorite growing up was always uh, Monfils because I loved that he would just implode and then bring back like the most incredible athleticism. So I, 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 I would go with him. You know, I grew up as an Agassi fan. I caught like the tail end of yeah. Agassi. One of the most vivid matches to me was when Federer beat him in the finals. So. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Which tenor, which tennis player do you hate the most, and why do you think Novak Djokovic is such a dick? Uh, <laughs> well, actually, we have we have ongoing beef with two tennis players right now. Oh, currently. good. Who are they? <laughs> the first is Riley Opelka. Okay, are you aware of him? Seven foot tall American. Know exactly who he is. Yeah. But Allegedly, don't... was dating Venus for a while. Oh, I didn't know that. There were like lots of rumors swirling. And if you go on their social media, they would be like at each other's events for a long time. And then it, it seems like that's dissipated. But that, that that was the gossip that we were told. Okay. And then who but else do you was, hate? Well, uh, Riley Opelka, I don't know if you've ever seen him on Twitter. He's a big anti, anti-vax uh, oh. type guy. Okay. Um, and then our, our number two that we have started to hate is uh, Stefano Tsitsipas. Um, who came out today um, against uh, feminism ruining the world. Um, Are you serious? So, so yeah, he, he, he should really stay in his lane, which is like he makes good like himbo travel vlogs where he's agree, like, wow, agree. I love having yogurt in Turkey. And it's like, yeah, stay in that lane. You don't got to talk about feminism or anything totally. else. Like, <laughs> Mind your business. But I mean, you, mm-hmm. I mean, Novak. Djokovic has to get up in your crawl with all the anti-vax stuff and him saying he'd pray over a glass of water and and remove bacteria from it. I feel like sometimes he's so crazy that we can't help but laugh. Like the thing where he just like touched bread and then decided off of like touching a piece of bread that he needed to become gluten free. <laughs> that just blew my mind to the point where I'm like, I don't even know that I can hate this. I'm just like, you are on a different level. We've got to get on to what you've had it with. Because that's the name of this that's, podcast is I've Had It. So I want to hear yes. what you've had it with. Let's go. Well, it's pickleball. <laughs> as as like a devoted tennis player, what made you pick up pickleball in the first place? So I had long COVID and it drug on for like seven months. I'm fit. I'm tall. I'm thin. I work out all the time. And I just had this debilitating like long COVID. <laughs> the, that's the your dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> We just did an episode on horoscopes because I've had it with those. And it said that as a Leo, I was arrogant. And I just proved that. (laughs) I just totally proved that. But anyway, so, but I had this debilitating brain fog and uh, my doctor suggested try playing chess or tennis or something. So I started playing. That shit is hard. Tennis is so hard. So at the time I was 47 and I'm trying to learn, you have to do 75 things to hit a forehand. And I was consumed with it, watched all the time and I'm a nut. So I'm taking like seven tennis lessons a day. Right. So then some girlfriends and I were like, let's go play pickleball. So we go play pickleball. It's a million times easier. There's a great place by my house. It's all designated pickleball courts, no cross contamination with tennis and it's called chicken and pickle. It's only pickleball. Yeah. We've heard about them. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure you want to take them down, but I, I Googled <laughs> the owner and the owner is a big Democrat. So that made me feel good about all the mm. money that I spend there. Right. I read an article before y'all came on to pumps uh, that was in the New York post about apparently in the West village, there's this park where these kids are out there trying to play and the pickleball players have put down their courts. And, you know, I, I, every, I'm the skunk at the garden party. I said, fuck the kids. I think that they haven't done anything with their lives. I think the pickleball (laughs) players, they're adults, they're paying for this shit. They deserve to go play pickleball. It wasn't a popular opinion. Okay. I was accused of being in a cult. A lot of, a lot of terrible things went down before y'all came on board, but I still maintain, fuck those kids. 
<laughs> well, the city, the city actually, I think today or yesterday, just put up big signs banning pickleball on those premises. So, oh. <laughs> unfortunately, the, the, city, the city sided with the kids. The kids but, won, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's just no argument you can make where a play area is for adults and not kids. I mean, you just can't sell that shit. Period. There was a there was a crazy article. I don't know if you'd go this far, but there was a crazy article, and I don't know if it's one you saw where um, a lady was threatening to call child protective services on parents whose kids were playing on that playground for not respecting the pickleball space. So <laughs> she might be more hardcore than you. I want to dive into <laughs> the rage. Well, to be completely honest, we first found out about pickleball like through the media, and. At first, our hatred of it was like more of a joke. It was like this thing that everyone's talking about, and it's really annoying, and I'm tired of hearing about it. Right. And the more and more we heard about it, the more insidious it became to us. (laughs) All of a sudden, it's like, wait, why is every single media publication publishing like five articles about pickleball that are just like how to play the game of pickleball? It's not even like covering the game, nothing interesting going on in the sport. Have you guys ever played pickleball? I mean, I know that that would be. We've stayed strong. We've towed the like, line. We no, got a couple friends. Not fucking never. around. <laughs> never, I, we have a couple ever. friends who have invited us. Um, and, you know, I just feel like we would be letting down the movement, you know, as, <laughs> as, 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 as leaders of this just nationwide campaign. We really got to hold the line. You've read yeah. the goddamn manifesto and you cannot turn back. <laughs> right, you can't get back. We're and not going to name names on this podcast, but they know who they are and they're on notice. <laughs> 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 Pickleball's loud. There's a lot, a lot of smack talk going on, which I love to do. And there's a she lot smacks of- talk during pickleball. I'm not lying. That's 100%, true. A hundred percent, I do. I, I'm getting the sense she smack talks during a lot of parts of life. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding! We have a winner. But I think you guys want to completely dismantle and eradicate pickleball, abolish it off the planet, is what it sounds like from this manifesto. <clears throat> I mean, I don't think we're going to have to. I personally, we've talked about this a lot. We're pretty convinced that this is a fad. It's going to go the way of racquetball eventually. Not going to be hearing about pickleball too much in five to 10 years. I'm going to say, I do think this is going to have a little bit more longevity. Just because of the accessibility aspect of it? My goal at the end of each day is just to be alone. And so the last thing I want to do is go to dinner with a bunch of women and hear a bunch of yak. Pickleball's perfect. You show up. You can talk for about two minutes before, then you play, smack talk, fun, then, okay, bye, got to run, and that's it. So you've spent time with people, but you don't have to hear about the boring, mundane bullshit that's going on in their lives. Are the courts that you all play on in New York, are they cross-contaminated generally? No, we play on public courts always here. Um, There's some really nice ones. There's some ones that are cracked and not so nice, and um, so far... um, the pickleball, you know, rise in New York has been limited either to private clubs or uh, children's playgrounds. They're they're picking their enemies wisely. <laughs> okay, I want to play a game with you guys, a game of would you rather. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Would you rather go on a hunting trip to South Africa with Don Jr.? You have to ride in a plane with Don Jr. and Eric. You have to share a hotel room with Don Jr. and Eric. And you have to kill two animals in this Africa. Is horrible. With Don <laughs> No one would ever pick that. With Don Jr. and Eric <clears throat> for five days. Or you have to play pickleball 10 hours a day for five days in the most high profile public <laughs> pickleball court wow. in Manhattan. What do you pick? Wow. I'm, I'm going with Don Jr. because they have the best <laughs> really? cocaine. On the They've got trip. the best cocaine. You know that's going to be a great time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just get some earplugs for the rest. Right, Mike. What about you? Are you going? Are you playing pickleball? Are you going? Yeah, we're going on the hunting trip. <laughs> see, see, I'm telling you, that's how much these guys hate. We got to stay on message. We come this far, right? I've got another one. You have to go campaign with Ted Cruz. <laughs> at his at his fundraisers at his political speeches you have to get go fucking crazy with ted for one week 24 <laughs> 7 with ted one week or play pickleball for two days these options sound so equally balanced you take a- <laughs> <laughs> i i'm i may i, I may Choose pickleball in this and kind of wear a shirt that says like I am a political prisoner and just and, and, you know, make a, 
I, I may play it that way. Is how I'm getting you out see? of this one. Here's my point. That's how fucking bad Ted Cruz is. <laughs> <laughs> You'd go with Don Jr. because you're right. Well, but Don probably, Jr. has the good drugs. You mean, probably do a lot of blow. You can tell by looking at Ted; he's not doing cocaine. <laughs> I mean, that's an easy. No, one. No, no, he has not fun. No fun. He hates. Well, where fun. does Ted stand on the tennis pickleball issue? Because that's like the only political thing I vote on. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> What is your intention? You know, like I read an article in Vanity Fair like a year ago that Obama was playing pickleball. Larry David was playing pickleball, both of whom I love passionately. And like cool people are playing pickleball. Are they on your list? I think they're on watch. (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're looking into who they're getting paid off by you know we're, we're, we're seeing the you're following the money we're following uh, the money big time i like it yeah like, it's kind of like that thing like when you see celebrities endorsing something this far like there's no way they're doing it for free like, so we know that there's like some money involved we know there's a ton of people who are investing in like uh major league pickleball and such who do you uh, well i liked watching it? I liked watching um, well, when, when uh, Tom Brady and LeBron both bought their Major League Pickleball teams. Their, the main sport they played, they started to do horribly in. So we're thinking there could be a little bit of a pickleball curse going on. Wait, no, I so watch out for celebrities. LeBron bought one. Uh, I think Steph Curry bought one. Tom Brady bought one. Mark Cuban. A bunch of celebrities. Yeah, a bunch of celebrities are buying them, but um, which I don't is know. really fitting because it's like the most Shark Tank sport ever. <laughs> <laughs> do you even do you consider it a sport deep down in your heart, or do you just? I think consider- it's, it's more of a game. I think we consider it kind of uh, alongside maybe a cornhole or um, <laughs> yeah, or like the the spike ball where you hit the, the trampoline uh, ball. Have you watched on YouTube? Have you watched like a professional pickleball are you a fan of those because i've watched those with people who like pickleball okay. and even them are like you watch you know tennis and then you know you're watching wimbledon and then the commercial comes on and it's like timeless and it's roger Feder. yeah it's beautiful forehand it's like rolex so then we start getting into pickleball god i really like pickleball but i mean god that i mean that pickleball channel i mean it's really trashy i mean it's really <laughs> well, it's, hard it's, on him it's the double-edged sword of being the, you know, this is accessible and not so snooty is that that tennis gets to have, you know, not that we as leftists would love it, but, you know, Rolex, uh, you know, uh, Mew Mew did a tennis line, right. um, Lexus, that's a lot of class. Pickleball kind of gives me the vibes of like when you go to like a, 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 a new brewery and they have like fat ass IPA and you're like, oh, right, no, I'm, I'm, like, this is not giving, this is not giving me like a, a, a Roger Federer in like a a white and gold cashmere sweater vest going out on <laughs> the you know, Wimbledon Center Court, exactly. And so, I think like there is like some impressiveness, but like the same level as like watching someone do hacky sack tricks online, <laughs> <laughs> like well timed and such. What cracks me up about pickleball is very it evokes a lot of emotion. Like you guys are yeah. wound up like cheap clocks over pickleball so much so that you're willing to go on a cocaine bender with Don. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But here, but here's what I would say about the animals. Um, the emotion of pickleball is I think when you have uh, all these fights over, you know, local tennis courts being taken over, child protective services, getting caught on kids, like <laughs> all of this, I feel like that's this, this, these, these pickleballers getting hyped up on this, like this juice of just like, we're the most popular sport. We're the fastest growing sport. Everyone should play our sport. And then it's like, you know, we're, we're going to end in a Jonestown type situation pretty soon. <laughs> I'm to take away this stuff. And let me tell you what, I will make the goddamn Kool-Aid. Yeah, for she's, the that, she's in. <laughs> she is in. <laughs> well, we'll we'll come back and we'll co-host the podcast with you, Pumps. After after that, yes, <laughs> yes. We'll talk about what a nut she was. That it actually was a cult. We knew yeah. it all along. You mm-hmm. sniffed it out well before I did, but definitely we all landed at the same place. Who do you think's behind this this pickleball movement? I, I don't think that there's any necessarily one person behind it, though it's very fun to allege that. And when you have just a Substack account on Twitter, no one can really stop you from saying whatever you want. Okay, so my question is, the only question that I couldn't wrap my head around in the manifesto was, why is tennis less capitalistic <laughs> than pickleball? Uh, because we say so. Okay. All right. That's good enough for me. I like the it. The serious answer is, I think, like, 
there's a lot of people who play on public courts, especially in New York City, who aren't yeah. like rich com- country club people, and they get like kind of ignored as being part of like the tennis community. That's probably true. Right. Yeah. So they're not just rich white people playing tennis. Who is your goat? Who do you think is the goat? I hate to say it, but it's Novak. <gasps> God damn it! I well, that. Michael, you're missing the you're missing the best answer here, which is Serena is the obvious. Obviously, uh, yes, yes. Yes. But, yes. But, but I agree with confines, that. I agree yeah. with that. I'm doing the yeah. Stefano Sitsi pass right now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to invite him in the U.S. Open next year. Open invitation if he wants to talk about, you know, communism, if he wants to talk about vaccines, anything. He can come to our small Brooklyn apartments and we'll just have a great time. <laughs> I bet he does that. Sounds exactly – maybe he mm-hmm. could take all the bacteria out of your drinks for you. Yeah, and we will have no gluten around. No, no gluten. No gluten. <laughs> I'll knock on my neighbor's door and say, I can't have gluten in the building. <laughs> I love it. We we are all for uh, open and civil debate, no matter how wound up we are or you are. You know, <laughs> we're gonna we're we're down to have it out. Everything should be um, at Club Leftist Tennis. So on on Twitter, it's at Club Left Tennis. But I think we have merch on Big Cartel, and we have articles from ourselves and a lot of actually really incredible like professional journalists um, on our Substack. So Club Leftist Tennis Substack.com to to read more, to, uh, to come, to come be, uh, tennis pilled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Thank Mike. you guys bye. Bye. so much. Bye. So nice, much. To, nice to meet right, you. Thanks, strong pumps. Loved it. Love them. They're great. Love them. How much do you love? Because I said so was the answer. Why? I mean, on the capitalist question, why is pickleball worse than tennis? Right. Because we said so. So Neely, you live in Brooklyn. You're around people like this all the time. How fun is that? They're so great. Aren't They're they so, so great. Funny? Hilarious. So what I want to do is I want to take all of you ladies to play pickleball. I really want to play pickleball. I don't know if this is a stupid question. Is, okay. is this going to be a stupid question? Oh, could be. Know. I'll let you tread know. lightly. Okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> Why is it called pickleball? So the story, it's a dumb name. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> okay. I wish it was named something cooler. Yeah. But the story is that on the West Coast in the state of Washington, there was a family and they were board and they had like a wiffle ball and some paddles and they kind of made up this game and i've read one article that said like their dog's name was pickle it's really it, weird name it's yeah, not a pickle it's a weird name <laughs> and but it's a great fantastic and contrary to what club leftist tennis says it is a sport <laughs> Like cornhole is a sport. Like Fuck off. And that other game. Hacky sack. Yeah, the hacky sack. And the- I'll tell you what. I'm going to get you guys out there and we'll check your heart rates and we'll, then y'all can tell me if you think it's a sport, sport or not. not. That's true. Okay, everybody like us on all the things. All the things. The Subscribe. Subscribe to the things. Follow us on the things. Rate. Rate. Do your deal. Write a review. Only if it's really hateful. Yeah. <laughs> we will see you next Tuesday. I'll tell you what I've had it with. Let's hear it. I've had it with that. I've had it. Had it. Had it. Had it. Had it.